You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. You're in a pub on a Saturday night and you've just finished your drink. You make your way to the bar, which is stacked with people. The left side of the bar is serving far quicker than the right and so you decide to go there. Now in that moment, you've made a calculation in your mind and decided, go to the place which serves quickest. You didn't do a literal calculation, but you've subconsciously recognized that the left side is more efficient and more valuable than the other to get served quickly. Now that is roughly what expected threat is about. The fact that certain spaces are more valuable than other spaces. Because you see, the same is true on the football pitch. Having the ball here in your own half is not as valuable as having it on the edge of your opponent's box. Now we know those two things intuitively, but how do we measure them? For a couple of reasons, this is why XG is the wrong model to use here, and why expected threat, or XT for short, is a good solution. Not all attacking actions are connected to a shot occurring, and XT is a way of zooming out a little bit further to see more of the game. Now, the current analytical metrics are descriptive at telling us who is attacking the opponent's goal or helping to provide those chances to do so, but looking at how the ball gets into those dangerous positions in the first place is missing. And that's the crux of what expected threat can tell us. What is the chance of scoring during the current possession based on where the ball is now? So this graphic here visually illustrates XT, with a model built using three seasons of Premier League data. The numbers in each grid correspond to the XT from that position, which can be interpreted as the percentage chance of scoring from the possession when the ball is in that position. Having possession closer to goal means that you're more likely to score, and having the ball deep in your own half means that you're less likely to do so. Of course, everybody knows that already, but this grid can be used in multiple ways, with the main output being how players increase their team's chances of scoring from their carrying or passing. In fact, any movement of the ball between the different zones can be used to calculate the XT a player adds through their actions, such as crossing or even looking at passes received that pull the team further up the field. For now though, these are removed as they skew heavily towards target men getting on the end of crosses and cross-heavy wingers and fullbacks. To start with, we want to measure who is consistently progressing the ball upfield rather than providing a general level of danger through their play. It's worth a note here to say that this model is built on event data, passes, tackles, shots, etc., but has no idea about the location of other players on the pitch. Looking at individual examples like the above may prompt a, well, that doesn't look right, reaction, but in the aggregate, the numbers are far more reliable. So here's how the model can be applied. Looking at Arsenal's final game of last season at home to Brighton, we see Granit Xhaka fire the ball into Martin Erdegaard's feet in the final third. Now that pass increased Arsenal's chances of scoring by just over 1%. A little under a minute later in the same game, there was a wonderful run by Brighton's Jakob Moda. The Poland international picks up the ball following an incisive pass from centre-back Adam Webster, completely slicing through Arsenal's press. Which Moda collects and then runs through Arsenal's midfield before offloading it to Leandro Trossard. By looking at all of the XT increases thanks to a player's completed passes and carries, we can illuminate the best ball progressors in the league, some of whom are predictable, but others perhaps a little more underrated or overlooked in their ability to move the ball forwards. This chart now shows the XT per 90 that a player adds from their passes and carries in open play. Again, crosses and pass receptions are removed this time, and only the positive XT is taken into account, as there are some actions, most backwards and sideways passes for instance, that reduce a team's chances of scoring. So Jack Grealish, by some distance, was the most threatening ball progressor in the league last season by this measure. Elsewhere, Mohamed Salah's ability to run with the ball on the break made him Liverpool's most dangerous player, slightly ahead of teammate Trent Alexander-Arnold. Callum Hudson-Odoi is fourth on the list perhaps showing just how underrated he is as both a passer and a carrier. Bruno Fernandes and Kevin De Bruyne, two high-risk, high-reward passers, both make the top 10. And there are plenty of other applications of XT2. Looking at the performance of players and teams over the course of games, adjusting the numbers for possession and considering how to quantify the defensive side of the game, or whether that's even possible, are all interesting avenues to explore throughout the season, during which, at The Athletic, expected threat will be a regular part of the analyst's toolbox.
If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence, and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.